Now let's discuss the character of Mr. Rochester. So Mr. Rochester is the other protagonist and this is the man that Jane Eyre ultimately falls in love with when she goes to work at Thornfield Hall. Now when we meet Mr. Rochester, he is presented almost as a Byronic figure. In other words, he seems to be tormented by something innate within him, something perhaps from his past which we ultimately realise is his past marriage to Bertha, which he feels really trapped in. Now, he's a really interesting and complex character, so as you can see behind me, I have created key quotations to remember for him. Now, the first quotation to remember when it comes to Mr. Rochester's character is how he is described when he first appears. And the quotation is, his figure was enveloped in a riding cloak, ellipsis. He had a dark face with stern features. And this is really what establishes him as almost this rugged looking Byronic male hero. He's someone who is intriguing. He's not conventionally handsome, but there's something intriguing about him. But also he seems to be tormented by this inner thing that we don't quite know what it is. Now the word level analysis you want to do here is firstly the verb enveloped describing how his figure was cloaked uh, in what he was uh, riding with. The other word level analysis are the adjectives dark and stern to describe his features. Again he is seen and presented as a very forbidding feature but also there's something about him that's very alluring and this is the very thing that Jane Eyre is intrigued by and ultimately falls in love with. Now the second quotation to remember with regards to Mr. Rochester's character is he was described as being he was proud, sardonic, harsh to inferiority. So he's somebody who's also a really harsh character. And the word level analysis you want to do here, this is a structural technique and this is a syndicate, an ascendantic listing, the listing of the adjectives proud, sardonic, harsh, to show that he almost has this veneer of sternness and harshness to him. The third quotation to remember when it comes to Mr. Rochester's character is this is now tying into this inward torment that he is experiencing. An agony of inward contempt masters me. This is what he says. And the word level analysis you want to do here is alliteration masters me. Now here he is confessing this to Jane but he doesn't quite tell her what is causing this torment to him. And of course this torment and the cause of this torment is this marriage to Bertha, the lady that he married from the Caribbean who he's unable to find a way to divorce and he was almost forced into this marriage by his father due to the large payment and inheritance he would ultimately get. However, he's now trapped in this marriage when Bertha actually goes mad and she is essentially characterized as this demon who causes his ultimate downfall. Now, the other quotation to remember is when he is justifying his marriage to Jane Eyre. So Jane Eyre, of course, is his social inferior. So whilst Mr. Rochester is part of the landed gentry, he is a wealthy man, Jane Eyre works as his governess. And in Victorian society, it was forbidden, it was very much frowned upon for somebody of his social status to marry a governor. However, he casts this off. He says he doesn't care. And he states... For the world's judgment, I wash my hands thereof. Here he's basically saying, I don't really care what the world thinks of me, I'm going to marry you because I love you, Jane. Now here, you want to focus on the hyperbole, the world's judgment. He realises that he's making a social blunder in marrying Jane Eyre as his governess. However, he doesn't care. He's very libertarian. He's very free-spirited. However, he fails to disclose to Jane that he is already married. And that's the major critical error that he makes. The other quotation to remember for Mr. Rochester's character is when he ultimately has to come clean. So he's about to marry Jane Eyre, then uh, his marriage is stopped when somebody in the parish and the church says that he is already married and then he takes them back to see Bertha and to see this mad woman he's still married to and he states, I had but a hideous demon that he was married to and of course here the word level analysis is the metaphor demon to describe his wife who is mad. The other quotation relating to uh, Mr. Rochester, and this is the final quotation, is at the end of the story when he atones for his past sins, for his past libertarian immorality, and he agrees that perhaps his disability, because he becomes blind, he also becomes disabled. His disability is God's way of punishing his past sinful behavior. And of course, he decides to take on Jane Eyre's Christianity. And he states showing his penance, Divine justice pursued its course. Disasters came thick upon me. And this is talking about all the punishment that he's gotten from God, which he sees as just punishment for his bad, immoral past behavior.
The word level analysis you want to do here is the alliteration of D, so divine and disasters. And of course, you've got the verb pursued describing how God pursued him and taught him a lesson in order to make him a better person and to make him more moral. So that's it when it comes to key quotations, remember, with Mr. Rochester's character.